Hello and welcome to another edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Coming up on the show, transformations being made in the public sector and civil servants express gratitude for national recognition. We have the details and so much more within the half hour. So stay with us. Attention all primary school students! The JIS invites you to participate in our 2024 Heritage Essay Competition highlighting the theme, Out of Many, One People. In only 400 to 500 words, discuss how our different cultural, ethnic or religious groups have contributed to building a stronger Jamaica. Essays must be written in standard English and have at least one reference from a JIS source. There are prizes to be won! Get creative! Share your ideas and make your voice heard. Submit your essay by Thursday, October 31, 2024. Be sure to visit jis.gov.jm for the competition guidelines. Your words can help shape Jamaica's future. Start writing today! Today I'm Theodore Henry and this is your JIS News for Thursday, October 31, 2024. The Independent Fiscal Commission Act 2021 remains on track to take effect on January 1, 2025. Former Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark gave the update in his final address to the House of Representatives on Tuesday. He points out that the Commission will take over from the Auditor General and is critical to the continuation of the country's economic management. What we have done is to institutionalize our experience of having domestic oversight They'll have a fiscal advisory committee, which similar to what we had in EPOC, and that's going to be chaired by Mr. Keith Duncan. It will have Mrs. H Helene Davis White representing union, not rep I mean from the union movement, Ms. Nancy Pinchas from civil society, Dr. Patrice Whiteley from academia, who's head of economics department at UWE, and Mr. Karine Tomlinson from the private sector. The appointments were made by the Governor General in accordance with the legislative requirement. A fiscal commissioner was appointed in May 2023. It is the fiscal commission that will ensure that even if the political space has narrowed, that the policies to ensure the fiscal sustainability of Jamaica will remain. It is that institution that will take our fiscal affairs out of substantially out of the political domain. Residents in the constituencies of Northwestern St. Andrew and Southern Trelawney will go to the polls on November 22 to appoint their members of parliament. Nomination day is set for November 6. The announcement was made by Prime Minister Dr. Andrew Holness at Wednesday's post-cabinet press briefing. The Northwestern St. Andrew seat became vacant this month following the resignation of Dr. Nigel Clark, while the Southern Trelawney seat has been vacant since September last year when Marissa Dalrymple Filbert tendered her resignation. I encourage all eligible voters to exercise their constitutional right to vote and participate actively in the democratic process. Ballots will also be cast on November 22 to select councillors for the Morant Bay Division in St. Thomas and the Anon Town Division in Clarendon. The two seats became vacant this year following the deaths of both councillors in May and September. Nomination day for these is also November 6. I will also use the same words of the Prime Minister by urging electorates in both divisions to go out and cast their votes. The government is taking steps to regularize land ownership in the St. Andrew Northwestern communities of Aki Walk and Jackson Town. Residents will be assisted in obtaining titles for properties they have lived on for several years. Prime Minister Dr. Andrew Holness says the government will be issuing a ministerial order to declare these two communities under the Registration of Titles, Cadastral Mapping and Tenure Clarification Special Provisions Act. 
This will involve the establishment of an adjudication committee to ascertain boundaries and resolve disputes, paving the way for the eventual transfer of titles to the rightful owners. The Prime Minister assured the residents of the government's commitment to resolving this long-standing issue as he addressed a town hall meeting held at the Meadowbrook Church of Christ earlier this week. So the process today is to bring together all the entities of government that can solve this problem of your title to the land. Close to 4,000 eye surgeries have been completed under the Jamaica-Cuba Eye Care Program since the resumption of service in August 2023. These have included cataract and pterygium surgeries, diabetic retinopathy, and anterior segment laser treatments. The procedures were conducted at two locations, St. Joseph's and Kingston Public Hospitals. Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Christopher Tufton gave an update during a recent media briefing and tour of the St. Joseph's Hospital location. I am pleased to report that the program conducted some 21,000 822 case consultation. Total number of operations completed 3,476. That's big. And finally, the Ministry of Education and Youth has dispatched its counseling unit to support students at Campion College as they cope with the tragic death of their schoolmate, Rashad Richards. Rashad, a second form student at the school, died on Tuesday after a goalpost reportedly fell on him. This morning, the school held a special assembly in memory of Rashad, where students participated in a worship session to honor their classmate. Newly appointed Minister of Education, Dr. Dana Morris Dixon, attended the assembly and gave assurances that the ministry would continue to actively work with the school to ensure they received the emotional support needed. It is important that we look back at the protocol as ministry, look at um, any ways that we can tighten it up, any support we can give to our schools because we never want to have this ever happen again to another child and another family. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. Secondary students, it's time to get creative for the JIS Heritage Poster Competition 2024. Whether you're a whiz with digital design or love to illustrate, this is your chance to shine. Design a poster using this year's exciting theme, out of many, one people. Prizes are up for grabs, so bring your A-game. Submit your masterpiece between September 2 and October 31. For all the details and the guidelines, head to jis.gov.jm. Don't miss out. Show Jamaica your talent and create something amazing. On Finance Matters this week, we'll tell you about some of the transformations that are taking place within the public sector. These are being spearheaded by the Transformation Implementation Unit, TIU. With the details, here is Executive Director Maria Thompson-Waters. Transformation Implementation Unit, TIU, is at the forefront of creating groundbreaking projects geared at revolutionizing the public sector. But how is the public sector being transformed? Hi, I'm Shaquille rochester Shorter, and welcome to Finance Matters. Joining us to discuss and tell us more about how TIU is transforming the public sector is Mrs. Mario Thompson-Walters. Executive Director at the Transformation Implementation Unit. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
follow the Ministry of Finance on Facebook, Instagram, X, LinkedIn, TikTok, and now Threads to see all the episodes and highlights. Mrs. Thompson Walters, thank you for being on our program today. Thank you very much for having me, and please call me Maria. All right, Maria, so since we're here, what are the objectives of the TIU? TIU has one objective, which is the successful and effective implementation of projects geared towards transforming the public sector. We prefer to focus on outcomes. And so we have six outcomes that we're working towards. The first one is around customer service and to make sure that we have an effective customer service culture in the public sector. And by that, we mean a customer service uh, methodology that really has customers at the heart of it. So everything we're designing in the public sector, all our processes, all our policies, at the very beginning, start with customer. Okay. So customer service is not just front end, but starts at the back of the house and flows right through to the front of the house. We want to make sure that we have knowledge-based workers in the public sector. Work is evolving. All of our routine administrative tasks are becoming digitized. And we want to ensure that the public sector's workforce is trained, developed, and properly compensated. We are also interested in ensuring that we have a e-government transformation in the public sector. We have streamlined processes, which means if we are transforming the public sector and we're introducing technology, then our processes, our policies, have also got to be streamlined to reflect that new way of working. Right now, the public sector is highly manual, as you know, so our policies are more geared towards that kind of work ethic. Now we want to ensure that when we are in the middle of our transformation, the processes that run the public sector, the policies that run the public sector are also being streamlined to support that type of transformation. We want to uh, ensure that we have strong internal and external relationships. So ministry to ministry, ministry to public sector entity, ministry to agency, ministry to department, government to business, government to our um, international development partners. Those relationships are strong and are on a good foundation. And at the end of it, we want to ensure that we have a public administration that is innovative, productive, and efficient. So Maria, in your old forms, you touch on knowledge. Yes. And you also touched on innovation. Yes. How does the RUN project fit into this? Oh. Sorry, the RUN project is um, one that I am very excited about. I can see. <laughs> yes, I'm excited about the RUN project. And I'm excited because, you know, the traditional approach to training and to upskilling employees is to focus, yes, on employees, but on what the employer wants. The RUN program looks across the needs of the employer, the needs of the employee and the future needs of the employer. So RUN is an acronym for reskilling, upskilling and what we call new skilling. Let me start with the reskilling program. So the reskilling program focuses on the employee and what the employee would like to do. Doesn't have to be connected to your job, doesn't have to be connected to you know, the, the ministry in which you work or the department or agency. It just needs to be what you want to be. So you can do business administration or you can do makeup artistry. Wow. So this is for, strictly for employees to acquire skills, whether it is for future plans down the road or just something you've always been interested in doing. Every single employee in the public sector can go onto the TIU's website publicsectortransformation.gov.jm and apply for the reskilling program. Okay. Right. So upskilling, which is the U in our run, is all about the employee, the employee's career, and where it is that they want to go in that career. Okay. So um, the upskilling program 
you have to apply before you can register. Okay. There's an application process for the upskilling program because we have to ensure that what you want to do applies to your current job. Okay. Right. So it's it's really around ac acquiring skills for your future growth in that job. And the new skilling program is about acquiring skills that are used irrespective of where you work or what you do. So things like customer service skills or conflict management, those types of skills. And you have to be recommended by your HR department. That recommendation comes to us, that selection is done by your ministry. We just facilitate your enrollment in the new skilling program. So Maria, let me see if I understand what's happening with the RUN project now. The R, reskilling, can register irrespective of your career path. Correct. The U, upskilling, you have to apply on TIU's website. Yes. And the N, new skilling, you have to be recommended by your employer. Correct. So, Mary, I want for you now to put into words for me what this really means for the public sector workforce. Thank you for asking that question. <laughs> so first of all, it's fully online. We have two partners, uh, Academy Plus okay. and Coursera. Okay. And so, and it, it is completely managed by TIU with assistance from our two partners. Whatever time you have to dedicate to completing your courses, the, the, the whole setup is flexible so that you can work within the time that you have. So that's the first thing. Okay. The second thing, and the most important thing, is that we're about transformation. Yes. Which means that we're about change. Which means that we're changing how things work in the public sector. We're changing how you work in the public sector. But we can't just change how we work in the public sector without regards to the current workforce yes. and providing that workforce with the skills that they need in order to work in the new transformed public sector. I agree. So it's important, it's really important for employees to take advantage of this. And don't say we don't have the time. You know, I work from eight in the morning and I don't leave work till seven in the evening. It is so important that you acquire skills that will help you to work in the new paradigm. Yes, and it's quite flexible. Very but flexible. Let me ask you this, how many times can I apply? Is there a limit? So for the reskilling, there is no limit. As I said, you can apply, you know, however many times you want for however many courses you want to do. Okay. For upskilling, once you've been selected, you can choose the set of courses that you're doing. You have six months to complete your, um, your courses. You can apply again if you wish. And if you're successful again, you can do another set of courses. Um, and for the new skilling, it's the same. You have a set, a set time, six months, once you're selected to complete the set of courses that you have applied for. Um, this is not a program that we're going to run once. We're going to be running this program continuously over the next five years. Wow, Maria, but we are at the end of our um, interview today. But before we go, quickly, yes. tell us three things that we should remember about TIU. Three things to remember about TIU. We are completely focused on implementing transformative projects. Okay. That is our single focus. The second thing, we are not transforming the public sector. We are working with the public sector to co-create our future. I love that. And the third thing, we are authentic in what we do. How we ask the public sector to operate is how we operate. We are right there beside you. We're not the consultants that are recommending and then you have to implement. We are right there beside the public sector. So those are the three things that I want you to remember about the TIU. And on that note, Maria, thank you for coming on our program and telling us about the Transformation Implementation Unit. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us on this episode of Finance Matters. Remember to follow us on social media at MOF Jamaica and tune in next week as we continue to demystify the economic and fiscal policies and initiatives implemented by the government to empower Jamaicans as we chart a path 
to Jamaica's economic prosperity. We continue to highlight the work of public servants who have been given national awards for their sterling and dedicated service to country. The focus is on Seton Richards and Dave Reed. Two colleagues working in the same industry for the same organization, the Jamaica Information Service JIS. One in photography, the other in television production, both driven by a similar passion and have mastered their craft with expert precision. Meet Dave Reed and Seton Richards, who were recognized by the government for contributions in their respective fields. Mr. Laverne Seaton Richards, Bands of Honor for Meritorious Service, a dedicated contribution of 50 years to media production and television broadcasting at the Jamaica Information Service. I feel very proud, honored, and humbled. Naturally, to be honored by your country is the highest honor that one can give. Photojournalist and JIS team member Dave Reed has captured thousands of priceless historical moments in service to his country. I feel proud and honored to be recognized by my peers and the country for the work that I've done. It's empowering um, and I feel that now I have to do more to have people feel the same way I have. The commitment to excellence by both Mr. Reed and Mr. Richards has earned them the respect of their colleagues and other industry professionals. Gentlemen, Mr. Richards, Mr. Reed, I am so proud of you. Thank you for your contribution to the growth and development of the Jamaica Information Service. We are here because of your input. And Mr. Richards has been awarded by Jamaica. Oh God, it's timely. He deserves it. Just the person, the measure of the man, he endears himself to everyone. Dave Reed has been a significant part of my career as a photographer. Dave Reed is the one who taught me photography and I congratulate him for receiving this award. Mr. Richards came to the JIS in 1975 as the youngster, straight out of the National Youth Service. Initially, he wanted to become a pilot, but all that changed as he became immersed in television production. At the time, you could not work in a government service without serving out your youth service. So that's what I decided to do. And after being employed, after about two years of service, I enjoyed it so much that I decided that you know, I would just stay because the Jamaica Information Service at the time and the job entails meeting people flying all over the country and also over the world. Therefore, my initial feeling or my initial um, wanting to be a pilot it, um, got lost and um, I just become involved and engrossed in the job so much that um, that became second nature. And um, as they say, the rest is history. Just like Seton, who chose television production over his initial career path, Dave also made a U-turn from being a graphic artist to becoming a photographer. Donna Ingrid Zaka, my tutor at Jamaica School of Art, now Edna Manley, um, had me, showed me interest in photography. And from that, it was, it was just, I just went into it. The passion that kept me going was the fact that the job offered so many things. You met a lot of people from different areas, from different strata of the society, and I found to say that 
being a person that can challenge yourself, it brings the best out of you. And um, that's what I, I really enjoy. Prior to receiving the Order of Distinction in the rank of officer, Mr. Richards also received the Governor General's Medal of Honor in 2023, the Badge of Honor for Meritorious Service in 2013, Veterans Award for Distinguished Service to Media and Journalism by the Press Association of Jamaica PAJ in 2010, and was second runner-up for Civil Servant of the Year in 2011. Of his 36 years in photojournalism, Mr. Reed has dedicated 27 to the government service, where he continues to grow in his craft. His entry into photojournalism began in 1988 at the Jamaica Record. He stayed there until 1994, then spent the next four years at the Jamaica Herald Limited before moving on to the now defunct Jamaica Press, Jam Press, where he worked from 1998 to 2001. He joined the JIS in 2001, when Jam Press was subsumed into the agency and is now a vital part of the editorial and photography team. Mr. Reed dedicates the milestone achievement of a national award to his late parents, who instilled in him the unwavering belief that with hard work, nothing is out of reach. My father just recently passed and I know it was something that he would have loved to see. So none of my parents saw this and I really hope that they would have. Prior to receiving the Badge of Honor for Meritorious Service, Mr. Reed copped five Press Association of Jamaica PAJ awards and certificates. His first award was the 1989 Aston Roden Award for Human Interest Photography in his first year in the profession. Both Seton and Dave say they are as passionate about their job today as when they started. Attention all primary school students! The JIS invites you to participate in our 2024 Heritage Essay Competition highlighting the theme, Out of Many, One People. In only 400 to 500 words, discuss how our different cultural, ethnic or religious groups have contributed to building a stronger Jamaica. Essays must be written in standard English and have at least one reference from a JIS source. There are prizes to be won! Get creative, share your ideas and make your voice heard. Submit your essay by Thursday, October 31, 2024. Be sure to visit jis.gov.jm for the competition guidelines. Your words can help shape Jamaica's future. Start writing today! This is where our journey ends, but only for today. Do join us again tomorrow when we'll bring another informative program. In the meantime, stay connected via our website, jis.gov.jm. And while you're online, send your feedback to Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm or via X at JIS News. You may also find us on all the major social media platforms and through our mobile app that's Android and iOS compatible. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Jamaica.